Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's been a while since we've done a viewer asked question, but let's kick this episode off with an interesting thing that somebody sent me at Sweetwater. We all know about the episode where we found that Slash prototype that wasn't supposed to be out yet, but now it is. It is out just in case you missed the new Slash Victoria model, but I don't have one of those right now. But we do have a Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s that has quite the hilarious little mishap. So let's see if we can find it here. Well, not on the upper bout, not on the lower belly, not on the knobs. Okay, everything's looking okay here. It's got the correct style knob. Sometimes you'll find the 50s standards get the 60s plastics and vice versa. Our neck is looking okay here. Ah, the headstock, it, it looks the right shape. What are we looking for here? The backside of the guitar, it's got nice wood grain. The serial number's not all janky or anything. What could possibly be wrong? Oh, wait! <laughs> the quality control missed this. They forgot to put the Les Paul model silkscreen on it. That's kind of cool. That's been known to happen from time to time, but the problem is, is it's hard to prove that it left the factory that way. Now, if you purchase it directly from Sweetwater, that's proof enough as long as you keep these photos and have your factory warranty. I'm sure if you sent it in, they would put one on it for you. But whoever snagged this thing at Sweetwater, good job, man. You've got kind of a slightly interesting story behind this one. But I'm sure we're going to see somebody post on a Facebook group going, huh, why is my Les Paul model silk screen missing? But now for the main feature of today's episode. I saved a viewer from getting horribly scammed. Just in case you're not familiar, I do offer private help sessions on my website. It's my main page on troglisguitarshow.com. I do charge for this service, but by paying me 30 bucks to give a quick look over the guitar and let you know what's good and bad about it, if it saves you 2,000 bucks, I think everybody's winning here. The only person that loses in this transaction is whoever's selling the guitar. So here's what Ryan sent me. He says, good morning. Thanks for all the quality content on YouTube. I really enjoy it. He says somebody is selling what appears to be a 1983 Gibson Les Paul gold top for a thousand bucks online. Okay, well, that's your first red flag. A thousand bucks for a legitimate Les Paul standard gold top? That's a little bit too good to be true. Oh, and the fact that the guy is claiming that he knows nothing about it other than it's from the 80s. Yeah, that's your second red flag. So he did all the usual stuff, scoured pictures online to see if it matches up with other ones and to no avail. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Our first photo, this looks great. This is exactly what a 1983 Gibson Les Paul studio would look like. So now when we start thinking a thousand bucks for an 83 studio, okay, we are within the ballpark range. Maybe this isn't just a big scam after all. You can see it is crazily, ridiculously dusty. Like this thing has been neglected to say the least. You can actually see like, it looks like a spider web or mold starting to grow on it. I'm gonna go with the spider web theory on this one. So maybe it is possible that the seller knows nothing about it because his grandfather passed away or his dad. Something, it's just been in storage forever. Either clearing something out. There's a lot of situations where some people who do not know anything about guitars can list them. But red flags that caught my eye right away here, this cannot be original. It's a custom shop? <laughs> that, that font has never been used on a Gibson truss rod cover. But at least it does only have two screws. It's not three screws, so you can't write it off as an Epiphone right away. However, from this photo, if we really zoom in here, you can tell that nut is not original just by looking at it. Gibson nuts, they don't come this tall. They're a little bit more rounded and filed off, a little bit more shapely than these. This is what you kind of see in some import guitars, some Epiphones. And speaking of Epiphones, right here, we do not have the fret nibs. Most Gibsons have fret nibs. If they don't, that's when you really need to look over the guitar. It could either mean it's just been refretted and on an old 83, that makes sense. However, something else you need to take a look at is the binding color itself. The binding is not colored. It's white underneath there. Sometimes the lacquer over top of it will age, but there's usually always at least a small area that has no finish on top at all. So this tells me something is really up with this guitar, despite the headstock veneer looking correct. And that's just the face of the headstock. But what makes it even crazier is when we go over to the back. That is 1000% Gibson serial number right there. 
so we can read that as a 1983 made instrument on the 250th day of the year and it is Nashville made 543rd in production which really means it was the 44th guitar stamp that particular day because there is a 500 number. Now to be fair here, the Made in USA, it looks close enough, but something's a little bit janky with that USA part. And I don't really have an explanation for all this weird marking right here. But the tuners themselves, they look to be similar in style to what an 83 Studio could potentially come with. There were a bunch of different variations, but these look slightly more modern to me. No volute, but that's okay. So at this point, it's really just looking like some sort of a modified Les Paul studio. Because maybe this is just a weird photo angle, we're not seeing the colors right here. But then we get this photo. That is not a Gibson body at all. I'm sorry, this isn't something you can teach, you just have to look at Les Pauls quite a bit to know that the proportions are off on this thing. And it mainly comes down to this whole poker chip toggle switch situation. And the whole body shape just isn't quite right because Norland era Les Pauls, they actually have a, a slightly pointier cutaway as compared to everything else. And if we really zoom in here, it looks like somebody has some sort of a metric bridge on here. Now, just because a Gibson has slotted posts like this does not 100% make it a fake. I think it's Tone Pros or something like that. That's a very common upgrade. They have the slotted things as well. So you can't just write it off as fake because of that. But if everything else is not adding up, that's when you really need to get suspicious here. We can't really tell if the pickups are original, but at least you have an adjustable row of pole pieces here and there. So that means they should be at least be slightly quality pickups. And these knobs would not be correct for an 83 Studio either, and it almost looks like we've got binding on this thing? The only thing this could potentially be at this point would be like a studio standard that has been heavily modified. I mean, maybe they messed things up when they added all these other parts. Let's continue on here. And now we get the full body shot with some natural sunlight. Here's where you can see the proportions really just are not quite adding up here. This headstock looks extremely out of place on this guitar. The inlays are far too white. And then when we flip it over to the back, that's what seals the deal for me. You would never find this on a vintage 80s Gibson. They just did not have ribbon flame mahogany like that. You Sure, you can find that in the modern day Gibsons because they use different styles of woods now. But to make matters even worse, any type of Les Paul studio born in 1983 would not even have a mahogany body. It would be alder. Unless this just happens to be like one of the XR extended range series guitars, then maybe. But the other thing that's really thrown this thing off is look at these large screws and kind of proportionately a little bit too small back plates. But it's got no finish on the back either. And yet the top is kind of an ugly gold top that's not quite right. My best guess as to what this thing is, is yes, this is real. Yes, this is real. However, everything past this point is an Epiphone or some other import guitar. So what somebody's done here is they've had a broken Gibson guitar from 83 or they purchased a broken headstock online. Believe it or not, they do show up from time to time and they spliced it on some sort of import guitar and they're trying to scam someone. And that's the reason why they had to finish the neck in order to hide the scarf joint. So my advice to him was this is pretty much worth the sum of the parts. I mean, if it's got good Gibson pickups in it, that's a couple hundred bucks right there. Maybe it's cool to you to have a real Gibson headstock at the top, but I think any more than 300, maybe 400 if it plays really well, that would probably be about the market. So a thousand bucks, definitely not. Oh, what is this invoice from? I. I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> yep, that's right. I'm buying stuff from Japan again. And to end out tonight's episode, I got an email today from somebody who thought that they owned an XPL Les Paul reissue, you know, the Aldo Nova model. So essentially, the story goes, he found this a long time ago. He got it pretty cheap. It was in kind of bad condition, though. So in 2017, he reached out to Gibson to see if they would restore it for him and uh, if they could verify if it was original. Now, they told him, uh, from what we can see, yes, it looks like one of the Les Paul XPLs. 
And I think it's fantastic that Gibson offers that little customer service thing, but just, just because you ask Gibson something and they say one thing, their advice is only as good as your photos. Just like my appraisals and advice are as only as good as your photos and my extensive knowledge of the Gibson world. So what I'm saying is <laughs> you kind of get what you pay for. But their help service is best suited towards, hey, here's the serial number. Can you tell me anything about this guitar? Or how it left the factory. Sometimes they will have that information for you. But as far as uh, detailed forensics, no, that's not where you go. So he sent me a few photos and just from this right away, you, you can tell this is not real. And how can you tell? This whole route shape, that that's not a Gibson route. However, the fretboard does look pretty good. It's got the fret nibs over top of it there, but these pickup routes just do not look right at all to me. And then when you get to the back, you can see that control plate, the way that that's routed, that's not correct either. Here's a slightly better look at that. I mean, that's just not how these things looked back then. We've got some sort of a janky truss rod. Now that just looks like it's missing the acorn nut, so it might potentially still work, but you don't have the nut, and Gibsons tend to only have that one maple channel right here, capping off the truss rod cavity, as those guys were back to one piece next. But this thing, it's got a scarf joint, one piece, two piece, three, four, five. Yeah, that... That is not Gibson in the slightest. And on top of that, it does not look like we have any official serial number. So the reason why I shared this to you is it is not uncommon for people to splice new things onto guitars. You can do it, that's that scarf joint. But the freaky thing is, is this. You can occasionally find these headstock veneers on eBay, Reverb, in various locations. You know, people find them dumpster diving or just vintage parts diving. Some people even make them. It's just a black holly veneer with a Gibson inlaid on it. So unfortunately, I had to break the bad news to this guy. Something else that's even against this thing is it's got back binding. None of the XPL series got back binding in the Studio Custom or Aldo Nova world. So sadly, I had to break his heart, but at least now he's not living a lie. All right, troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today. I hope you learned something. If you ever need help, I'm just a private help session away on my website, and that's a great way that you can also help support the show, as well as protecting yourself at the same time. All right, troglodytes, take care.